Let me ask you something. Let's say you're just about to start investing for your future. You're a beginner. Maybe this is you right now, or maybe you have to look into the past to get to this time. But just imagine it. Forget about asset classes, forget about leverage, cash flow, ROI, all of that. If you were given two options, the first one being you can start investing with $67.50, and the second option being starting investing with $85, which one would you choose? It's not a trick question. In fact, it's a question every Australian has had to answer whether they know it or not. So which would you choose? $67.50 or $85? Well, of course you would pick $85. It's $17.50 more. But believe it or not, when most Australians are given this choice, they don't choose $85. Now, although it's not that obvious, every Australian has access to this sort of deal, but most just choose to ignore it. And even more worryingly, recently, I've seen people publicly rejecting this opportunity and actually recommending against it based on incorrect information. But it's so much more than that $17.50. Let's look at another example. Let's say you had an investment property that you bought for $500,000. And after 10 years, it grew to a million dollars. Now, obviously, after selling your investment property, you're not actually gonna walk away with half a million dollars in profit. You do still have to pay taxes. And in a very simple scenario, that could drop your profit down to less than $410,000. But if we're using the same opportunity that gets you the $85 over the $67.50, your profit from this exact same deal leaves you with $450,000. That's more than $40,000 extra than the other example. Same person, same cost, same growth, same amount of time, the difference, superannuation. Now, I know a lot of you probably dry heaved at the thought of super, and I get it. Super's about as unattractive as a man wearing nothing but a shirt. But these simple examples do show something, and this is something that all investors need to take into consideration. So for those of you who are still watching, thank you, and I promise to make the rest of this video worthwhile and have you walking away with something of value. Now, before we get into the details, I'm obligated to let you know that this is not financial advice and this is educational information only. Now, what I'm not obligated to ask you, but what I'm going to ask anyway, is could you please gently like this video it really helps not only our decision-making in regards to the content that we put out, but it also helps our videos and our channel get pushed to a larger audience. It doesn't cost anything to do so, but it really does make us happy. Now, with that out of the way, let's quickly go over what superannuation actually is and why it exists. Quite simply, superannuation is money that has been put aside while you work to be saved and invested until you reach retirement at which point it should have grown to a sizable amount that can now provide you with an income in your later years. The main reason it exists is back in the 80s, the government saw just how quickly the population was expanding and they thought, wait a minute, we're not gonna be able to pay the pension for all of these people when they stop working. So let's help them help themselves. They'll be able to save their own money while they work and invest it so that can supplement their expenses while in retirement. But in order for this deal actually to go over well with the population, they had to have some keen benefits in it for the individual. And boy, when these benefits are used effectively, they can do wonders for saving money and growing wealth. And this is why I'm here. Hidden behind the fact that this money can't be used for expenses until retirement lie some of the best legal tax dodges and investing hacks that most people end up completely neglecting. So what are the details around tax and super? So using the term tax zones, which has been coined by Connell from What If Advice, there are currently four tax zones in Australia. Company, individual, superannuation, and pension. As an individual, you can pay up to 45% in taxes, which doesn't even include the Medicare levy. However, in your superannuation account, you only pay 15% tax, which is dramatically lower than what it is as an individual. So going back to the example that we used right at the start of the video, 
Let's take an average Australian earning $45,000 a year. Let's say they want to invest $2,000 of their pre-tax income in shares. It doesn't really matter, it can be any investment. If they want to do that outside of super, then that $2,000 already after being handled by the ATO drops down to $1,350. However, on the other hand, if they were to do this from within super using salary sacrifice or as it's otherwise known as concessional contributions, they could elect to put an extra $2,000 into their superannuation account, which would allow them to dodge the individual tax rate, meaning that $2,000 would only be taxed at 15%, leaving them with $1,700 to invest with. So investing through super, they gained an immediate guaranteed 17.5% return. Now let's break down the investment property example. Let's say you have two investment properties. They're identical to one another. One you bought inside of your super account and the other was bought outside of the super. Both were bought for $500,000 in 2010. It's now 2020. The price of those properties are $1 million each and you sell them. Now again, don't think you'd be walking away with a million dollars in profit, 500,000 from each there are taxes to be paid. Let's look at the one that was bought outside of super. For simplicity, let's assume you have no other income for that year, other than that $500,000 gained from the sale of your investment property. Unfortunately, that puts you in the highest tax bracket, the 45%, but there is a slight saving grace. There is a thing called a capital gains tax discount. And when you hold an investment for over 12 months, you actually get a 50% discount. So your taxable income would come to $250,000, still over the 45% tax bracket. Looking at the guide here, you'll have to pay $54,097 for the first $180,000 of that income. But that still leaves $70,000, which are over that, which needs to be taxed at 45%. Overall, that would bring your tax bill, including the Medicare levy, to $90,597, leaving you with $409,403 from the sale of that investment property. On the other hand, with your property inside of Super, you also get a discount. This time it's 33%. So that would mean you only have to pay taxes on the remaining $333,333.33, but that amount is only taxed at 15%, which brings your entire bill to only $50,000 which makes the tax bill for your property outside of super almost double when compared to the property inside of super. So overall, that would leave you with a profit of $450,000. So while I'm not suggesting you lock up all of your wealth inside of super, because believe me, I wanna access some of my wealth before retirement, you would be silly not to recognize the power of this system and how it can be used to not only minimize taxes, but really speed up the growth of your wealth. So hopefully this video has given you an appreciation for the power of super. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a video on what people need to be checking now with their current super situation and the specific steps you need to take in order to keep that running smoothly in the background. And so if that sort of content is something that you're looking for, definitely go down, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to make sure you're notified when that video is posted. One final thing, if you guys do enjoy free money, Stake have a promotion running at the moment that gives you one of three free stocks when you sign up and fund your account on their platform. The referral link will be in the description, so make sure you go down and check that out. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you soon.